everyone, I'm Leah. And I'm Gabe. Welcome to the Data Cloud Summit to all of our data scientists, engineers, developers, and professionals. We hope you've enjoyed the sessions in the summit so far. In this session, we're going to take complex, fragmented data systems, simplify them, and bring them together on a massive scale. In our demo, we'll show you how Google Cloud can help a company build a new application that delivers great consumer experiences while keeping it simple, open, and integrated for developers. Meet our fictitious company, Symbol Solar. They own a solar company that sells renewable energy products and allows consumers to track their savings and their ability to resell excess power. As a part of their product revolution, Symbol partnered with Google Cloud. <laughs> Symbol wanted to build a modern data cloud that takes information from various sources to power a unified insights platform. And Symbol relied on an old database architecture and struggled to manage all types of data across multiple clouds. But now, Symbol wants to deliver a platform that makes new data easily accessible to their consumers so that they can better understand their own energy usage. The new architecture will enable Symbol's developers to go faster by providing a serverless, scaled experience for application development, data science, and data insights. And finally, Symbol wants to introduce modern B2C interactions, including gamification, to help change consumer behavior in real time and make the whole consumer experience a little more fun. That's right, Gabe. And to summarize Symbol's data cloud transformation, we'll focus on four objectives. First, empowering developer experiences by using serverless wherever possible. Second, enabling petabyte scale queries that can be performed in real time. Next, unifying insights across multiple clouds. And finally, simplifying business intelligence with a unified semantic model. So to achieve this, we're going to show you some of the latest innovations from Google Cloud as of today at the Data Summit. We're going to leverage five key products. Cloud Spanner, the relational database that scales with our mission critical data. BigQuery, the industry's leading data warehouse solution. Serverless Spark, so we can build new machine learning models without managing infrastructure. Vertex AI, to deploy and monitor those models. And finally, Looker, to serve all of Symbol's data for its business users. And by combining the differentiated power of each of these products, we'll create a modern architecture to serve both internal and external data use cases. Oh, and by the way, any of the architecture diagrams that you see was built from an awesome new tool built by our one and only Priyanka. So cool. Thanks, Priyanka. All right, so let's explore how this architecture comes to life in our app, Symbol Solar. Here, we're starting at the home page, viewing our consumption data and details on our house. Now, energy consumption is being surfaced from BigQuery using Looker's API and underlying semantic model, while our personal information is being powered by Spanner. It looks like we're actually seeing some consumption in the app. Can you dig in some details a little bit? Yeah, let's drill into those details. So as we look deeper into this detailed usage, we can even see recommendations being surfaced for how to change our energy consumption. We'll cover this in a bit, how easy it is for data scientists to build production grade models, both ML and semantic in our architecture. And check this out. I can take direct action from this app. So setting up new tools like power monitors or other IoT devices. But with millions of devices for our app to manage, we need a highly performant and globally consistent database. So thanks, Spanner. For the developer, we've simplified how easy it is to build, maintain, and enhance our consumer products. Yeah, that's right. So now let's go a little bit under the hood to show just how we've enabled this consumer journey using our Google Cloud architecture. Our consumer journey all starts with our ability to collect and transact on data at scale. With our sensor data and user transactions in Spanner, we know our application will seamlessly scale for millions of users across the globe and with five nines availability. Spanner's fully managed capabilities also ensure that our team can spend less time on database tuning and more time on feature development that benefits our consumers. And let me just gush a little bit more about Spanner. So for our developers, the new Postgres interface means they get the familiarity of working in Postgres, but with the scalability and reliability of Spanner. Plus, with granular instance sizing, we can leverage Spanner in more places during our development workflow and make sure we have the right sized environments for our development needs. Once we've generated data from our application and from our devices, we ingest and transform data across these sources and many others using standard SQL with BigQuery. So just to add some more color here, 
We have our data being assembled across Spanner using federated queries, from AWS using BigQuery Omni's cross-cloud analytics, and also from our new Google Cloud data lake using big lake capabilities in BigQuery. So for each of these data points, all we have to do is create a connection to the data from BigQuery, and then we can just use SQL to query data from any source. Plus, we can control our data using the same BigQuery access policies across both external and BigQuery native tables. Meaning, just like Gabe said, even though our data sources are spread across different infrastructure, we can prepare this data for analytics using standard SQL. Next, using BigQuery and serverless Spark, we can build and submit our notebook using a single pane of glass. This enables us to run massive pre-processing and computation for ML using the best tools for the job. Now this is huge because we don't need a Gabe to understand the underlying mechanics and cluster setups and configurations. Right, so using serverless lets developers focus on development and Google to focus on giving us the best and right size infrastructure for the job. So we've talked about our architecture at a high level, but now let's focus on how this allows us to scale with our consumer growth. Like we said before, we used to rely on old database centric architectures. So data science at scale was really a struggle. While we had data science ambitions, in reality, our data science team spent most of their time trying to get data or being production support, trying to deploy and troubleshoot models. Our goal with the new architecture, in addition to modernization, is to let engineers in each area do what they love. And with this new architecture, our developers can focus on their specialties, meaning we're better equipped to build high quality data products. It's also gonna mention that in the prior architecture, we would have had to stitch this together using many products and many code bases. Using Google Cloud, we can be intentional about using products that all work seamlessly together. Okay, let's jump ahead and talk about how we provide our transformed data and models to the application. Gabe, can you talk about how we did this at Symbol Solar? Sure, so let's start with our data science flows. For our data scientists, we built our models using serverless Spark that we were able to execute from BigQuery's UI. Once we have our models built, we can leverage the MLOps capabilities in Vertex AI to provide end-to-end -end management of both our models and our processes. Right, and once our models are created, they're checked into the Vertex AI model registry. Now this lets us see changes that happen in our model, giving us complete version control. And then next, we create a live endpoint with Vertex AI endpoints. This scale to zero service allows us to not worry about how much infrastructure we have for our models and focus on using Vertex AI endpoints model management capabilities to track our model effectiveness. Not only that, but we can build faster because our data scientists can use programming languages that they're already familiar with. And with frameworks for model deployment and monitoring, MLOps processes can all be performed in a single pane of glass. So far, this new architecture has really simplified the amount of non-core work that our teams have to do. Now, we're crunching petabyte data sets across our clouds, unlocking more use cases and further transforming the business. Okay, so let's walk through that last component, how we democratize access to this data, serving it up to our internal BI users and our external consumers. Leah, you're a product manager. Can you walk us through some of the capabilities for this application? Of course. So with Looker, we create a modern, governed, universal semantic layer that queries data across our data clouds. The semantic layer contains our business logic, written as code, that can be defined and shared across our entire organization. Looker queries databases to get the freshest available data and then serves insights for the model to users. Insights can be served in dashboards, alerts, embedded experiences, or custom data applications. And not only can our team consume data in the Looker UI, but they can also access governed data in Data Studio, a connected Google Sheet, like I'm showing over here, or even other BI tools. Now with these new integrations, our stakeholders can work in the tools they're most comfortable with, while still giving our analytics team the confidence that these metrics are accurate, since they're all coming from our universal semantic model. We can also embed insights to their direct workflows, removing BI swivel chair operations where users need to look at a dashboard and then take action on another screen. Similarly, for our application engineers, we're going to leverage that same universal semantic layer. And from there, we can share our insights from our data using feature-rich APIs, extension frameworks, or embedded analytics. And not only does this model give us confidence in our data, but it also ensures that all our information is securely managed including row-level security, 
This means that when our Symbol Solar app users query data, they only see what they're supposed to see, so their own data. And last, Looker enables us to serve our customer across clouds and databases using the universal semantic layer. We can access, govern, serve, and take action on any data that's available using a SQL connection and provide insights from across the data cloud. For Symbol, this allows us to create a differentiated data product. We can increase app stickiness and provide premium product offerings for customers to learn from and act on all the valuable insights that we've created. Exactly. OK, so to wrap things up, let's quickly review Symbol's data cloud architecture. It starts with data that we collect from our products and within our applications, which then land in our data lake, transactional databases, and other clouds. That data is then unified inside of BigQuery. Next, our analysts and data scientists can work with the data using serverless platforms like serverless Spark and Vertex AI so they can focus on the right development tasks. And last, we leverage Looker to democratize insights and allow both internal and external stakeholders to take action, closing the data feedback loop. All of this is made possible and simple with Google Cloud. So that's a wrap on our exploration of the data cloud made simple. Thanks to all of our data engineers, scientists, analysts, and professionals who are able to join us for the Data Cloud Summit. And data on.